Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna be talking a bit about kind of where you are in the scene right now, where you are in StarCraft, because you haven't exactly had the opportunity to necessarily get the big results that a lot of players would be looking for yet. So why are you different than a lot of the other players that are trying to break out in the scene right now? Well, I think the, the biggest difference um, between me and a lot of players is that the way that I think about the game and the way that I practice means that ultimately I can theoretically end up a lot at a lot higher level than almost any player. You're referring back to sort of the detailed work that you put in, the way that you think about the game and actually put in the time and your kind of dedicated scheduling of how you practice, not just kind of grinding games. You're willing to take the immediate loss of, you know, my my ladder ranking will go down because I'm working on mouse accuracy or I'm working on a certain part of my game. But because of that, you're able to kind of win long term. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. How long do you think that is going to take to sort of start paying off? I think in a sense, it, it already has started to pay off. I am definitely a lot better of a player than I was six months ago and easily better than at any time in the past. I think kind of the the issue now is that so many players are so good that it just takes a long time to get up to that level. Do you feel like you're capable of competing and beating out the top players in North America right now then? Yeah, I think so. I think if I could play a full day, if there was any tournament that lasted a day and I could play as well as I can in every game, I think I would uh, beat essentially everybody in North America. Right now, the kind of the problem that you're facing is unlocking the key to trying to play at your best, play at that consistent level for the entire day or for when you need to. So what has been the hardest thing about making a name for yourself in the scene? The, the hardest thing for a long time was just being good enough that your name registers. You know, if you, if you look at an online tournament or if you look at streams or whatever, you need to be at a certain level to get five viewers. And you need to be at a certain level to get to the main part of a bracket that most people will look at. And for a long time, I just wasn't that good. A lot of the North American players know me and I know them. And now, now the issue is going to be making it so that the people who aren't at every uh, North American tournament and aren't always on Reddit and aren't following my stream and whatever, so that they can find out about me as well. The hardest part of that is obviously, again, it's another step up of being good where you have to really show up and uh, impress a lot of people. And if you had to describe yourself as having one big strength and one big weakness, more as a person or as a player, what would those two things be? Um, I guess my big strength is that, like, I want to be good so badly, I think is probably the, the best thing I have going for me. Yeah, and again, my, my weakness would be inconsistency. I just have have a lot of trouble on two different days. I could totally trounce a player and then lose to him 2-0 in a tournament the next day. How are you going about tackling the inconsistencies that you have then? The, the biggest thing that I've done to tackle inconsistencies is try to specifically write down everything that I'm looking for and what time that is. So I've been really working hard on scout timings is the biggest thing that I think kills me right now. Because if I can see doing something, my mechanics are so solid and so good that almost anybody in North America will just not have enough stuff. And oftentimes, even against some of some of the better players, it's not close. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing some of those awesome mechanics as we jump into the awesome game of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the awesome game of the day! My name is Fear Dragon, as of course I hope you, you know by this point in the broadcast. And I'm they joined don't. here. <laughs> they don't. And I'm joined here by the very cynical man, Cybert. He's not the cynical Brit, but uh, you know, Total Biscuit couldn't make it, so we <laughs> we settled for this guy. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, we got a uh, Total Biscuit was gonna come in, but instead, I guess we'll just bring in the Cybert guy. They're basically the I found, same. Found him on the street somewhere. We're gonna be jumping in, introducing the players <laughs> as we spawn over here on the left hand side of the map. Catalina, on top of the red Zerg player. You know him and you love him. It is 
Sleets from Sci Storm Gaming. And in the northern position, you probably also know and love him, the blue Terran player, Nathanius. Of course, the Kappa clan, as Nathanius is known for. I'm just going to leave it on the Kappa for like the next couple of minutes as the game gets started, because, uh, I mean, yeah, I think like really, what else do we need? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. We've got the production tab. We've Nathanius. got the Kappa. God, so nice, Nathanius. Uh, streaming as well. It looks like this is a game that both of these players were streaming. And I think it's just so awesome. He's like, let's share the viewers. Ask them to see share. this uh, stuff. Yeah. Pretty nice. That's, that's very nice of him. All right. Well, we got a gas opening coming out from Nathanius. Um, not a super early gas geyser, yeah. though. So he's not actually going to have enough gas, I think, to go for anything super crazy, like a fast uh, one base factory or something, but should have enough for a Reaper. Yeah, I believe he went 11 racks, although I may have missed it. But yeah, it was like 11 racks and then I think 15 hatch or something like that. I mean, it was certainly hatch before spawning pool, but that Reaper going to be heading out across the map soon enough. And his SCV is already doing that preliminary scouting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Unlike the Zerg versus Terran that we saw earlier on, this Terran player wants the information. He wants to know what his opponent is up to. And he's finally going to see it after seeing that natural expression. Oh. He's like, oh, I, I feel like I know what's going on. Uh, I guess he doesn't really care about scouting out the gas geyser. Well, that's... <laughs> So I guess that I guess that uh, SCV stepped a little bit too far, a little bit too close to the hatchery, and he was able to uh, see it. Either that or Sleet just said well met at the appropriate time. At any rate, we've got the Reaper heading in. Oh, Sleet! That transferring drone almost going <laughs> down will turn into an extractor. Ooh, the other drone's being pulled off the line. This can sometimes be dangerous for our Zerg player. Yeah, but he manages to keep him alive, and you have to remember, if you're uh, out there, if you're a business person or aspiring to be a business person in the future, you want to manage people, remember, even if they're almost dead, they have seven broken bones, and they literally don't have a jaw anymore, they can still work as effectively as if they were at full health. And if we're talking about Reapers, they have got that sick, sick regen... Mm -hmm. All the way back up to full HP. Nathanius has got his two Reapers heading around the map. He's going to be adding on the reactor to the barracks. He's dropping the factory as well. And oh. wow, that is a that is a third CC right there at the yeah. gate of the natural. Yeah, that is a very, very ballsy third CC. Um, it's going to shorten the flight time distance if he decides to go for that other third expansion. But Reaper's coming back in over here. The Queen's trying to deal with it. But ooh, he might actually be able to get some nice damage done over here. He's already killed off a couple of these Zerglings and even a drone or two. Yeah, he, actually, that's drone number Reacher. three right wow. there that just went down. Currently, no Zerglings, but there's always that, like, kind of latent cost of, well, I forced him to build Zerglings, and that's almost as good as killing drones. But in this case, it wasn't actually that many Zerglings. Yeah, I mean, killing off three drones already with just two Reapers, that's actually really not that bad. Normally, you only get the Zergling kills, and... Uh, you have to also remember behind this, Nathanius was going for the 3cc style. He's kept the Reapers alive. Mm -hmm. So when these Hellions pop out, he's going to be able to put on even more pressure. I'm really liking Nathanius' situation in this game. Yeah, this opener, I mean, I'm I'm assuming it does have a lot of weaknesses that if the Zerg would have opened up a little bit differently, he could have exploited. But at this point, I mean, the third CC is there. It's planted. It's finished. And it's, of course, going to be transforming into the orbital. And everyone loves to talk about triple orbital. The mule production means that you can take a bit of damage and still transition out of it. Yeah, it's one of those things where a lot of players out there, they like to say, you know, if a Protoss player is on one base with 16 workers at least, they can still win because Protoss is really good at one basing. Um, Terran, on the other hand, if they have three CCs, they can go down to zero workers, uh, and they have mules, so they're okay. Uh, Nathanius really believing in that sort of philosophy and saying, you know what, I can even skimp out on supply depots at my wallet. I can just use my third CC for the wallet. 
Yeah, man. Now, in this particular case, with Sleep being up 20 workers, oh Nathanius is still keeping abreast, at least in the mineral income for part of the time. Maybe not exactly always leading, but, I mean, as we can see, the power of those mules keeping a Nathanius in the economy race. Yeah, and now he's going to be looking to even up that economy a bit with this Hellion Reaper harassment. He's going to be moving in, but he didn't send in those Hellions earlier on. So the Creed spread is starting to get a joint, actually already a joint between the Natural and the Third. It's going to make him much easier yeah. for the defense, but oh, already losing a couple of these Queens over here. What does Sleet have to defend? He only has one Zergling out of the map. Wow, making four more. He's going to be adding on an additional 10 there, bringing oh his count God. up to 14 as the layer is on the way. He's adding on more gases over at the third base, but he just doesn't have the units. Uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of an awkward situation when you don't have units to defend against the attack. Uh, that generally means it's going well for the Terran player in this situation, but the Zergans are starting to pop out. He's starting to get some nice pick oh. killing off the Reaper, killing off a Hellion. Queen may be able to defend, but how much damage has been done so far? I think surprisingly little. I personally expected oh, wow. that drone count to be even higher as far as the drones killed, but only 10? That yeah. is still a healthy amount of damage, but I was expecting, you know, in upwards of 20 drone kills, as sometimes those Hellion runbys can be nearly game-winning. Yeah, I've got to say, Sleep actually did a pretty good job of defending that, all things considered of what kind of situation he was in when the attack came, but he's going to be throwing down the Spire, and I want to note, Nathanius, yeah, he didn't kill off, like, all of the workers at Sleet, is does not have a non, Sleet has a non-zero number of drones, which is obviously not where Nathanius wants Sleet to be, but... Nathaniel still has a 3cc style going for him, and if they're on relatively even worker counts, I still kind of like Nathaniel's situation a bit better. Yep, that mule kind of mule adjusted income is just so strong, despite the fact that it's only two mining bases. But that's what everyone loves to talk about. We've got third CC going to be planted down relatively soon. And again, that spire like you were talking about, but also the fourth hatchery going down for sleet. It's going to be a fair little while until it's actually uh, saturated, but at least he's got it on the way. He's trying to stay abreast of Nathaniel's by, you know, that one extra base. Indeed, and that's something that we kind of heard him talk about in the uh, interview is that he likes to go for that macro-oriented style of play, and again, likes that, I mean, he's going from Muta Ling Bling again, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Slee. He does like to go for that sort of more mobile, sometimes more base trade esque force. And we'll see how well it ends up working out. He's moving in with some Zerglings, trying to get some counter harassment done. Another thing that he really said he likes to do. Unfortunately, these Zerglings are in a bit too small of numbers to really even up that workers killed tab. But as you were talking about, we could end up seeing some bigger counterattack sort of play. There's the transfer of drones for the fourth hatchery as uh, the mutas are also going to be popping on out. And we could see some classic, classic 2-2 two -two, uh, Terran versus this muta Ling Bling as you were talking about. Yeah, upgrade's almost dead even for both these players. And... Nathaniel's kind of poking forward. Oh, actually, you got a Widow Wind Broad over there. Uh, gets four kills. Not yeah. too bad. But Well, that's he's... one of the things that I noticed in the other game as well, is the, the upgrades from Sleet are, like, either as good as his opponents or better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been really doing a good job of it. And it kind of makes sense. If you're going for this sort of style where you have a lot of Zerglings, you have a lot of Mutalists, you have a lot of these units that really need to... Ooh, take cost-efficient engagements to uh, work out, then, yeah, upgrades are going to work oh. out well. Oh! That would have mine. That, that would have mine got an extra couple of Banelings for his trouble. Now, the Muta's coming down on top of these Medivacs, cleaning uh. up one or two of them. Oh! That other Widow mine. I guess that was only four kills there. I Maybe did he get friendly fire? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. Sure. That looked like a bigger explosion. It did, but he also, uh, we ended up seeing Sleep get a couple of Baneling hits off on the SCVs in the meanwhile, and that does mean he does not have any more Banelings left over for this additional aggression coming on Nathaniel, so he's got to come up with some sort of defense. The Banelings, though, on creep with Central Bingo Hooks, able to get some decent hits off. The Zerlings, though, there's not enough. He needs some more Banelings. He just doesn't have them. Nathaniel's letting his uh, Metabax get maybe a little bit oh. too far out of position, and every, oh, man... These Marines, there's not many of them left. Well, yeah, a uh, great target fire coming down from Nathanius. Just absolutely obliterates the Mutalist count, which is not something that Sleep wants to have happen. I mean, 
in comparison contra uh, for contr contrast, we actually ended up seeing the ZVT that Sleet had sent in earlier. He had an overwhelming number of mutals. He was really able to seize control of the game completely with the high mutals count. This game, his mutals count is abysmal. And he's yeah. still suffering from lots of aggression coming out from Nathanius. On top of that, these Widow Mines, they can always be that make or break factor. Ooh. They can get some incredible shots off. Maybe not so much here, but some yeah. decent shots for sure. Oh, this last group of Marine Marauder almost getting absorbed there by the Zerglings. Yeah, the medevac count not super high though, and actually this mule is going to be able to pick those guys off as well. So maybe not the worst situation over here for Sleet. He's doing some good damage, even though the bunker is going to be able to hold on versus the Zerglings. I think that Sleet is starting to equalize a little bit, at least in terms of his army size. He's got a lot bigger of an army than he did previously. Yeah, and he's of course staying ahead on the worker count, but also on the base count. And... Mm -hmm. Quite some time ago, he sent over his overlords to start dropping creep at the potential fourth mm. and fifth base locations. He's keeping an eye over there. He wants to know when Nathanius is going to take those. And you talked about the mutalists. Well, you know, they're not necessarily in great numbers, but they are going to be relatively well upgraded. Yeah, and I mean, 16 mutals, it's starting to get up there. It's actually starting to get to a pretty decent number. So if we can hold on a little bit longer and make sure he doesn't lose too many more, and actually, if we can pick off these medevacs, oh, the medevacs should be able to get back to oh. safety, but got to be careful about those widow mines. Yeah, Ooh. they do get some pretty nice shots off. Can Nathanius actually finish off the mutas because they are low on HP, oh, but they're not sleep. That's the commit. That's the commit as Nathanius picks up a couple more mutas. Eight more going down in the last minute. Oh, God. 19 mutals killed so far this game. And a lot of them, honestly, in situations that Sleet just kind of overcommits or loses track of his mutals for a split second. And Nathanius is there to punish it. But Sleet does still have, again, that booming economy going for him as he's sitting on those five bases. Sorry. Yeah, five bases. And honestly... He, he's got pretty good upgrades, as you were saying, going for him as well. But Nathanius is finishing up 3-3. Three, three, and 3-3 three, three is not started yet for Sleet. So there's going to be a nice little window where Nathanius is going to be ahead on all those upgrades. Yeah, I mean, the Hive still has another 60 seconds to go before it even finishes up. Now, we do have the Mutas looking for opportunities on the right side. But on the left side, the Banelings are looking for those money shots. They want those kills. Yep, missile turrets getting focus fired down immediately. No repair are going to be happening on them whatsoever. This planetary Ooh. fortress is as good as dead, but how's the third base for Sleet looking right now? It could be as good as dead as well. Nathanius has a really nice pre-split on all of these Marines and these Marauders. He's waiting for those Banelings to come charging forward. And oh, oh, those Banelings, be so careful. Be careful with that Widowmine just there waiting in ambush as they're just hoping to bait a lot of these Banelings in there. The fourth oh CC God. or the fourth planetary does end up falling. Yep. And I guess seven kills on that Widowmine. Probably not too shabby. Yeah, Mutals are trying to do some good damage to the reinforcements coming out of Nathanius. Nathanius had a pretty decent engage on the left side, side of the map, and I love what he was doing. He used those Marines. It's a really great splitting technique where you actually just patrol them and not run them in and Ooh. skim them into the Banelings. It's generally not what you want to do. But, uh, yeah, Nathanius, he was able to, like, use the patrol to really heavily split up the Marines because they just all kind of meander about in really weird directions. And they kind of naturally split themselves. It's really cool, actually. Interesting, but the Mutalisks trying to find the appropriate angle. There's a nice Widow Mine shot that potentially could have been deadly. They're not actually very good at all, as these Widow Mines are basically impacting Zerglings and not even that many of them. Banelings rolling on through. The Marine splits are pretty reasonable, but mm -hmm. one Baneling does manage to make it through into the SCV lines. Not enough to kill these off, though. Yeah, but those SCVs are so low on health that the Mutals start going after him. He's going to be in a lot of trouble and going to be losing a lot of those SCVs. But the Marines are starting to come in. I, are they actually in a high enough, enough number? I mean, the Zorglins are coming in to reinforce as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing yeah. is, like, either one of these armies could be swept off of the map by just a couple of wrong moves. Ooh, this Bane. Nope. All right. The Widowmine just kills up one kind of morphine Baneling there. Not really doing a huge amount of damage. Did some nice splash, though. Unfortunately, Nathanius not really able to capitalize on that super well. 
The upgrades, as you were talking about, it was ahead for the Terran, but that window is closing. Indeed, sleep. Trying to move in over here. He's dropping the creep. He drops the creep. Uh, and actually, no, the Marine. The Marine is going to be able to stop yep. that creep droppage. <laughs> but the thing is pushing in at the third expansion once again. He's looking to finally do that damage he's been trying to do all game, but there's no medevacs. And oh my god, Nathaniel just gets eaten oh. up by the Banelings. What am I? And the attempt at the drop over in the southern position doesn't look like it's going to be able to do all that much either. These units are dangerous, but they're beaten and bruised. So as soon as the reinforcements get here for Sleet, he'll be able to clean it up. I'm assuming the reinforcements ever show up. Yeah, the Mutals are flying it as fast as they can. I would say it's humanly possible, but they are Zerg units. And he's going to be able to Ooh. clean that up. Looks like fast as Zergly possible is fast enough. And the Banelings Ooh. and Zergans clean up the aggression on the top side. Sleet is starting to spiral way out of control in terms of getting further and further ahead. He's sitting up 50 supply right now. Yeah, and pretty much all of that is in the army. As we can see, he's maxed out. He is ready to tango. And here comes the Zergling wave, a complete surround. There's not even a pickup until at the very last moment there from Nathanius. The Widow Mines get some nice shots off, killing a lot of these Zerglings, but will they be able to power on through for their Terran buddies? No, the Medivacs get absolutely annihilated. The third base is exposed, and can Nathanius stop the flood? Well, it gets turned around regardless. <laughs> Oh my god, this game is just a constant back and forth of Nathanius defending this third expansion and Sleek defending his third expansion. They just keep pushing back and forth and back and forth. But I think that Sleek, he just has too many units at this point. And with the Ultralis coming out, I think that might be actually curtains for Nathanius. Unless he just has an overwhelming number of Marauders coming up. But they're not coming out. We see just Marines coming out right now. Ooh. We've got the Mutalisks. There's a big clump. There's only Ooh. one Widow Mine ready to fire, which means they won't die even with the incredible splash damage that those Widow Mines did. The second Widow Mine completely on cooldown, not being effective. And goodbye, Planetary, once again. Now, of course, Nathanius just had to transfer pretty much every worker out of his main base. He's got almost nothing at the natural. That's the GG. I think this might be game pretty soon, Cybert. <laughs> um. Hey, man. <laughs> I was getting so ready to wrap up my economy talk, and then oh he just gg would out, and I was like, oh, that's where I was getting to. God damn it, Nathaniel's killing esports. But thank you very much for uh, <laughs> joining me today, Cyber. I very much enjoyed also the games from Sleep, but where can people catch you at, man? Because I know that you do, again, like for those who don't know, maybe you tuned in a little bit later and you didn't hear my spiel about who Cyber is. Cyber does all of the awesome parts about breaking out. He does all the transitions. He does all the intros. He does all the bumpers. He does all the good editing on any trailers that come out. Any bad editing is done by me. So, man, where can people catch you at? You, know, you can, of course, catch me on Twitter at one cybert and that's one spelled out o-n-e-s-y-b-e-r-t if you need graphics or things done specifically motion graphics not so much still graphics you can of course hit me up there i love doing starcrafty and esports related things so potentially mm -hmm. you can uh we can help each other out but other than that thank you so much for having me on I was able to cast some games last season, which was a ton of fun. These games this season were equally as fun. And this game in particular, it was indeed awesome. It was indeed. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in for the awesome game of the day. We still have plenty coming up next as we go back to sleep with the interview. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back.